Hello, welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be explaining organism distribution and measuring the distribution of organisms. Now, organism distribution simply means where living things are and how many of them you would find in a certain area. Okay, so obviously organism means living thing, distribution just means where something is. Now there are five physical factors, by physical I mean non-living factors that could affect uh, where organisms live. Okay? And they are temperature, light, nutrient availability, water availability, and availability of CO2 and oxygen. Okay? Now these factors affect where living things will be found. Generally, the higher the amount of each of these, the more living things you will find. Obviously up to a point, because if the temperature increases too high, then fewer living things can live there. Okay? So you can see this example in the fact that rainforests are the richest places on Earth in terms of the number of living things. And they have very high values for each of these. Whereas if you go to the top of a mountain or to the Arctic, you're going to find far fewer because these resources are less available. Dead simple. Now there are two methods of sampling that you need to know. Okay? And both of them use a quadrat. Now a quadrat is a small either metal or plastic square that we can place down on the ground and then count organisms in that area. Okay, so let's imagine it's one meter by one meter. So it'd be one meter squared. Okay. And there are two types we need to know. Firstly, if we're sampling, let's say a field or a large area, how would we go about it? Well, what we'd do is we'd have to randomly place our quadrat in different parts of it. So I'm going to place five quadrats down here. So I've got my five quadrats there. Now it's important that they're randomly placed. Now that can be done by either generating random coordinates for our grid and placing them in those places, or by simply throwing it at random uh, so we aren't picking where we place it. Now this is important because it reduces bias. In a scientific investigation, we can have no bias to make sure our results are reliable and accurate. Okay? So what we do, this is used for sampling plants. So what we would do is we'd count the number in each one. So let's say I'm trying to find out the number of daisies in this field. But obviously it will be a massive job to count the number in the whole field. So what I do is I count the number in each of my squares. So let's say I have had 3 plus 2 plus uh, 4 plus 3 plus 3. Okay. So that would give us, so 3, 5, 9, 12, 15. So we've got 15 uh, daisies in total within my 5 metres squared. But I need to work out how many would be in 1. So I simply divide that by 5. And that gives me 3. So for every 1 metre squared on this field, there are three daisies. Then I would need to work out the total area and multiply this to get me an estimate for the whole field. See my field is 20 by 20, which means it is 400 meters squared. So to estimate how many I'd find in the entire field, I'd simply do my three for one meter squared times 400, which would give me 1,200. So my estimate, for, my estimate for the number of daisies in this field could be 1,200. Now the other way we need to be able to work out how to sample is between two different areas. So here I've got a forest and a lake, obviously very simply drawn. And I want to know how the distribution of plants changes between those areas. Now what I would do is I would lay down a tape measure between those two areas and then I'd place a quadrat at regular intervals and count the number of organisms in those quadrats. Now the key for this is it's not random. You're placing them at regular intervals. So say for example, every one meter you would place down a quadrat and count the number of species number of individuals of each species. Okay. Now this gives us an idea of how the distribution of organisms changes. Obviously we wouldn't just do this once. You'd have to lay down another two transects and uh, count the organisms in those areas. Okay? Now I've seen a long answer question where they ask you to explain this about how you would actually carry out the experiment uh, 
giving a detailed plan. So they may ask you to do that. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. Hope this helps. Uh, please like, share and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Russell Bio. Thank you very much.